Good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Good morning. If you want to just come and get your seats, we are going to get started this morning. It is a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Right, everybody? It's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. If you just want to turn your attention to the screen, we have some announcements for you. Hey, Life Church family, it's time for your weekly news. Join us Wednesday evening for our midweek service at 7 p.m. as we worship together and pursue more of God's presence. We'll be starting our last series before the summer begins. This series is all about living an abundant life. We'll see you there this Wednesday. Join us Monday nights for young adults as we worship and learn what it looks like to follow Jesus with each other. God has been doing something special in this group and we want you to be a part of it. So if you are 18 to 30 years old, Come on out at 6.30 p.m. on Mondays. Oasis Youth meets from 7 till 9 on Tuesdays. We believe that God is raising up a generation that will be on fire for His presence. If you are 12 to 18 years old, join us for a night of fun and connection as we go after more of God together. Life 100.3 Christian Radio Station is going to be joining us at Life Church Muskoka on Sunday, June 18th. They'll be promoting their radio station and celebrating Father's Day with us. We'll see you then. Happy Mother's Day! On behalf of our Life Church family, we would like to thank each and every mom for all that you do and for being who you are. We've got something special to celebrate you today, so be sure to head to the back of the sanctuary after service. For more information, or if you'd like to get involved with what God is doing here at Life Church Muskoka, head to our website at lifeic.org slash weekly. Have, Have a great, great week! That's awesome. Now we turn it over to Pastor Linda. Are you, are you treating those mothers really well today? Yeah? Are you taking them out? Yeah? Yeah? Wasn't that a great weekend last weekend? I still feel different. I don't know about you, but I just feel different. And, and that's really neat. When you're in the presence of God and he comes and he changes you, you don't even know what he's done. It's so awesome. So awesome. I'm reading today from Psalm 18. It said, Could there be any other God like you? You are the only God to be worshipped. For there is not a more secure foundation to build my life upon than you. You have wrapped me in power. What's that? Must, what, what must that look like? Wrapped in power. And now you've shared with me your perfection. Though through you, listen to this, I ascend to the highest peaks of your glory. How's that for Mother's Day? Who wants to ascend to the highest peaks of glory? You have access to that. To stand in the heavenly places strong and secure in you. You trained me with the weapons of warfare worship. I don't know if anybody heard that Emma Stark thing that I put on Life Church, but I'm telling you, this place is a wild place. Wild in the spirit. And it says, now that you've trained me with these weapons of warfare worship, now I'll descend into battle with power. To chase and conquer my foes, you empower me for victory with your wraparound presence. Do you know he's not planned any defeats for you? That's good news. Wow. Wow. You strengthened me and made me great. You've set me free from captivity, and now I'm standing complete, ready to fight for some more. Who's get ready here to fight and take back the things that the devil has stolen from you? Hey? You know there's giants in the promised land, but he says you are well to overcome and take those giants and bring them down in the power of the Spirit because you're wrapped in power. That's so awesome. Whoa. Wow. I pinned them to the ground and broke them to pieces. I finished them once and for all. They're as good as dead. You placed your armor upon me. Jesus Christ. Wow. And defeated my enemies Wow! Wow! Forever 
silence, they'll never talk to me again. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. Thank you, Lord, that you empower us with your presence, with your power, with your goodness, and your glory in this place. We thank you, Lord, for the heavenly hope being released in this place today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you call us up to give us the privilege to shift an atmosphere over region, and you give us the presence and the power and the goodness to shift atmospheres over ourselves and over everybody we come in contact with. Thank you, Father. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. And we do know that you have given us everything that we need. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let it increase to the name of God.
something in your body right now, if there's even a friend or a family member, just right now, just have a conversation with God and just tell Him right now, say, God, I receive that healing for myself. I receive that healing for that person. I receive that healing for that person right now. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you for your miracle working power of God right now, Father, over these people, God, over these loved ones, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the miracle working power of God right now. Thank you. 
just been kind of chewing and meditating on. You know, it says in Exodus chapter 16 that the Lord supernaturally provided manna for his people. And it said some gathered little and some gathered much. But everybody had enough. But that tells me something about God. That means if I'm hungry for a little, God's going to give me a little. Remember, we're talking about the supernatural. We just had a whole weekend talking about the unseen realm. So you don't think there's been an attack on your life this week? Absolutely. Hello, wake up, smell the coffee. The devil wants to keep you dead and busted and disgusted and cranky and miserable and living on a low-level life of Christianity that's powerless, that's weak, that's anemic. So there's a manna that's available for the church. How much are you gathering today? How much am I pressing in past my comfort level? Because I want to receive from heaven. He's not a cheap, rip-off, bubblegum machine, plastic ring, zirconian diamond God. He's an extravagant, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-holy, all-to-be-worshipped, all-to-be-praised. Fall on your face and repent and give Him the glory, God. I remember the first time our family went to New York City. My wife was literally brought to tears. I remember I'm driving the Honda Odyssey van. A good family. Kids are in the back, bouncing away. And we cracked the horizon. And it's like, this city and my wife actually started to cry. Because she had never seen that type of city before. Do you recognize what's a new horizon for you this morning? What God has given you, the gift that was here last weekend. The gift that flew across the country. Like, I'm blown away. That woman does six, six speaking engagements a year outside of her home church. And she came to Little Old Life Church Muskoka. No, with a hundred. Okay. Hey. She came to all-knowing, powerful life church in the heavenly realm. But come on, guys, let's be real. There's like 150 people, 200 people that call this home. If we come on a Sunday, a little over 100 people right now. But God pricked her and said, that church is hungry. They've been gathering manna. They've been saying, God, we want more. We need more. We're making these declarations, God, and we haven't seen our family shift yet. God, we've been praying over the sick, and we haven't seen a dramatic increase in healing yet. God, we've been praying in tongues. We've been getting up early. We've been interceding. And God said, well, then I'll send one of my top generals over there to give you some more. Hey! The imagination that's been sanctified. New age has ripped it off. Eastern mysticism has borrowed from the Bible. It belongs to us. Revelation. God says to John the Revelator, come up here, John. Come up here. I want to show you some stuff. Goodbye, yes. Goodbye, yes. Goodbye, shame. Goodbye, pain. Goodbye, grace. It's a new horizon. Goodbye.
there's a new, um, what was released that last week wasn't for the just last week. But Pastor Dan was saying, there's another level for this week. There's another level for this week. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying, come up here. And so I, I just challenge everyone right now to close their eyes and posture yourself in a position of receiving. Father God has something for you right now in this moment. And I want you in your imaginations to come up here. He's saying, come up here. See his eyes. Look into his eyes. His eyes are like flaming fire. He's so beautiful. Look at the face of Jesus. Everything you need is in his presence. Everything you need is in his presence. He's restoring the dreams and visions that have been hidden and buried in your life. Come up here. Be with me. There's so much more. There's so much more. There's so much more. In Him, there's perfect peace. There's nothing missing. There's nothing broken. Everything is whole. In His presence, your body is whole. In His presence, your body has no pain. In his presence, there is no lack. In his presence, there isn't just enough. There is abundance. His streets are gold. There's diamonds everywhere. There's beauty everywhere. Everything you need is if you just look in his eyes. You don't seek his hand. You look in his eyes. Feel his love telling you how very precious you are. How very unique he made you. How very unique he made you for a specific reason. And for a specific purpose. There's a destiny. If you have breath in your lungs, you're not done. If you have breath in your lungs, you're not done. There is a reason that you are here. There is a reason that you're on this earth. There is a reason that you wake up in the morning. I challenge you all that when things come against you during the week, go to this place. You can go to this place any time you want. You can close your eyes and say, Father, I come into your presence. I look into your eyes because there I have perfect peace. Despite the storm around me, I have perfect peace. I am whole. I have provision. I have love. There's more. There's more. There's more.
has mounted a horse and he has his flaming sword and he is riding into each one of your lives and he is cutting off everything that has held you back, everything that has held you back. Just keep pressing into him, keep pressing into him, keep pressing into him. got a promotion. I don't know if it's in the physical or the spiritual, but you just got a promotion. 
God has released promotions over you this morning. It was just like falling. Promotions, 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 promotions. Keep pressing in. Because it's in hell. It's in hell. It's in hell. God, I just thank you for your amazing presence that's in this room. God, I thank you for your perfect shalom peace. God, I thank you for who you are. That everything we need is in you. And we push into you. We stay focused on you. We just bless every mother in this room with an added blessing. An added blessing of love. An added blessing of peace. An added blessing of joy over all the mothers in this room today. Amen. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Welcome to Life Church. It's an exciting place to be. You never know what's going to happen here on a Sunday. You don't know what God's going to release. You don't know what God's going to do. So um, if you're a visitor here, if you want to raise your hand, and our ushers, if our ushers are ready, um, they can just distribute the, there's like a special pen for you and a You Belong card, if you could just fill it out so we know your information, so we can reach out, we can connect you, we can add you to our newsletter so that you know what's happening to um, what's happening this week and what's happening going on at Life Church. So this is a special day. We have some special things for moms. So we have, and they have set up a beautiful photo booth at the back of the church so that you can get a picture after church with your mom. The moms can get a beautiful a photo because every mom loves photos of their kids. I used to hate that as my mom was always like, can we have a family photo? And we all go, ah. And now I'm the mom going, can we have a family photo? <laughs> Right? It always happens that way. So there's a beautiful photo booth at the back. You can take your pictures with your mom after church. Also, all visitors, if you stop by the welcome table, which is the first table right at the back here, um, we have, um, after church, we can just, we'd love to connect with you. So make sure that all of your, this is your first time, we would love to connect with you. Come to the welcome table after church. And we have a few other things. We have also a special gift for mom on the way out the door. So if you're a mom, make sure you get your special gift on the way out the door today. So even though this is Mother's Day, we have a few announcements about the men. So the men are not left out completely today. So we have a couple different men's events coming up at Life Church, and the first is a men's bonfire on May 26th at 8 p.m. Is that a Friday night? I believe that's a Friday night, right? That's a Friday night. May 26th at 8 p.m., and then there is going to be a men's breakfast on June Saturday, June 3rd at 8 a.m. So there's two um, really awesome men's events. So men, make sure you get connected. Make sure you come out. There will be more details on those events in our weekly newsletter. You'll find out more on our Sunday announcements as we get closer. But just keep those dates, so save the dates for men. So those are special events. Next. Oh, we have tickets. We have tickets. For, oh, this is what this is. Okay, there are some tickets, and I guess they will be at the back. Do you know how much they cost, Pastor Linda? Oh, there's no cost. Just get your ticket. So that means, get this, get this for at least two friends. Invite two guys out to come out with you. Don't just keep it for yourself. Make sure you invite some guys out and get your tickets. And I would like to welcome uh, Whitney. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Everybody looking so good. All the moms came in, all like colorful and pretty. Love it. Um, so I get to do the offering. Um, can, if anybody needs an envelope, can you raise your hand and ushers will bring you an envelope now? Thank you. Um, so I'm going to share a scripture with y'all y'all probably never heard before. Just so you know. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 11. He who sows sparingly. Um, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one of you, as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, having always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now, may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness, 
while you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through God to us. So my takeaway from that, um, I want to plant seeds with God because he's good, and I want to partner with him in everything that I do. And I want to reap bountifully both spiritually and materially. Um, You know, I want to grow deeper and deeper with him spiritually, but I also, you know, when I'm tithing and I'm I'm sowing, I'm sowing, you know, from my business to him, and then he supplies back, and then that supplies, you know, to me, and and then I can buy, you know, I want a Timberline Traeger XL. It has 1,320 feet of square feet of cooking space. I can cook six briskets. The whole idea with that is I bless him, he blesses my business, which blesses me, which I get that, and then I can cook six briskets from everybody at church, not one at a time or two. Yeah. So it's this beautiful cycle. When I give cheerfully to him, he gives to me my heart's desire, which then I can give to other people who doesn't love briskets. <laughs> I'm practical. I just, I like good cycles of giving, and it's fun, and if I can be cheerful in that, and I like it. Um, you know, and I love what Wendy was saying in some of her, her little nuggets. She gave good nuggets, y'all. Did y'all? Like, I was like, you know, if I was writing it down, which I wasn't, I put it on my phone. But my hand would have been hurting. But, you know, she said imagination is a framework or a womb where something is built. The imagination is the womb of faith. When you get this seed, it has to take root because of your imagination. Because faith is visionary. It's not blind. And another couple good ones. We nourish in our imagination. You will deliver what you're intimate with. So, you know, think about that today when you're tithing. You know, I have a new business I just started on top of my other one. So I'm when I'm sewing, I'm sewing because I want to see increase in my my new business and I want to see increase in my existing business. But then I also want to reap the things that come from loving him and serving him and giving to him because he's going to do it to me. So I just want to bless you all today. Whatever your your thing is right now in this season, whatever you're trying to pursue, just pray about it. Sow into that. Lord, what can I do? And imagine it, right? I have... You know, I, I went to the bank a couple weeks ago, a week ago, to open the new accounts for my new business. And the guy goes, how many employees do you have? And I said, well, just me right now. And he goes, how many do you expect? I said, a couple hundred. You know, the practical response. I don't think tiny. I think big because he's my creator, and I'm going to do things with him. So whatever he's calling you to, whatever he's got for you, think big in it. Don't just think small. A couple hundred, of course. That's like the bare minimum. So um, we have the tithing, uh, the declaration. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, and I want to make sure Deb is like, do this in order, just a second. So, okay, I'll do it in order, good. Just thanks, Deb. Um, Father, I'm sowing this seed of finances into the glory. Your word says that you will supply for all of my need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In the glory I know I find salvation, unity, wisdom, knowledge, revelation, healing, deliverance, supernatural abundance, prosperity, and miracles. As I sow this seed to heaven, I release the Holy Spirit to use it where it is needed, and I look forward to my harvest of glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So as the uh, ushers are collecting that, how's everybody's day going so far? It is gorgeous outside. It's boating weather, y'all. I'm getting excited. I had told I was gonna say a joke to y'all. Maybe I'll maybe I'll read a joke. Let me Google it just real quick. There's some funny ones out there. I was laughing. There's some videos I saw this week online, y'all. Oh my god. You know when you like cry laughing on your own, but you watch these memes or something, you're just like, Who pays for this stuff? So funny. I'm only going to share a joke if I can get one in time before they bring us up. I really don't have one. Just kidding. Nothing funny enough. Well, Lord, we just thank you right now for this uh, this offering, Lord. We thank you for every business, every home, every family that this represents, Father. We thank you for strategy, wisdom, blessings, favor, love, increase in every single thing from every family and every business 
that is, is contributing here, Father. We just thank you right now for a release of heaven this week, change and transformation over every finance, Lord, even where people maybe are giving where it's a stretch. We thank you that you multiply it in Jesus' mighty and precious name. We thank you for a beautiful cycle of giving and receiving, Father God, in Jesus' name. morning. We have something different for you this morning. And we have words from women today. So we have had, we've asked some women to come and speak. And each of them have been really courageous to stand in front of you and share what they've Lord told them to share. <laughs> come on. And it reminds me of an event we went to one July 1st, we were there with Katie, and it was in Ottawa. And at the end of the night, just as the sun was setting, it was getting dark, they had all the women come up and stand at the front. And we just began to stand together and pray. And as we're standing there and praying and singing, when we look behind us, standing around us, were all the men. And we were completely surrounded by men protecting us as we stood there. And it made it feel so much different when we're acknowledging the difference between men and women. So today, as we listen to this woman, I want us to form that protective circle around those that speak. That we're hearing their hearts, hearing their voices, and honoring them for doing this this morning and sharing what the Lord has spoken to them. Is that is that a deal? Can we do that? Good. And I really feel like today is a day of significance because this area has been resistant to the voice of women. And I declare today that as these women stand up here, we are driving a stake into the ground saying, women, you have your voice back in Jesus' name, that you are going to be able to speak the word of God with fire, with love, with glory, with goodness, and your mouths are no longer shut anymore. And we declare it in this region and in this church that the women of God are coming forth in power. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We're going to ask Debbie and her daughter in to come up first. Yay! <laughs> Thanks for the cheering crowd. <laughs> it's encouraging. Okay. Um, I'm written and kind of flowed as I wrote, so I'm just going to deliver it. I've always wanted to be a mom, and I dreamed about becoming one since I was a little girl. However, once I got married, as much as I wanted to have children, I also knew that I had to build a strong foundation in my marriage before children came into the picture, because I didn't want to do that one alone. So my husband... Phil and I were married five years before our children began to arrive. As much as I had thought and dreamed about being a mom before I became a mom, I never knew that something so small could affect my life or make me feel so incredibly special. I never knew how it could feel to be the only one dependent upon feeding a hungry baby. I never knew such a strong bond could be developed between a mother and her child. I never knew my heart could break into a million pieces when I couldn't fix a hurt. I never knew the warmth, the joy, the love, the heartache, the excitement, or the satisfaction of being a mom. I never thought I could love someone so much and then somehow try to find more love with three more. And I really never knew that I was even capable of being a mom until I became one. All of you here that are mothers can relate to some, most, or all of these feelings. The extra strength, abundance of endurance, emotions, and wisdom that you need 
has to come from the Lord. Because believe you me, there were some crazy days. One important job as a mom is to help build temples for Jesus to live in. I don't know about you, but I think that calls for some divine assistance. If some of you don't know me, I'm a mom of four children. Two girls, 14 months apart. Then a boy, 18 months later, (laughs) who's on the soundboard. (laughs) And then a girl, five years after that. Currently, I'm a grandma of five grandchildren. Thank you, Jillian. I was a stay-at-home mom for the first three and a half years. Um, And then I went back to work until our fourth child was born. Once my maternity leave finished, I continued to work in my career as an executive assistant and event planner. My husband and I were also very involved in ministry, as my dad was a pastor. So we were very busy with work, ministry, raising four kids, and just life. Was it all a bed of roses? Absolutely not. (laughs) There were days I didn't think I'd make it through to the next day. But somehow God came through with just I needed, what, what I needed at just the right time. As parents, we had made a vow to, to God to raise our children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. So you come to a point in your relationship with God, you either trust him to fulfill his word, or you don't. The scripture, Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart. We tried to do this with everything we knew to do. Full circle training, Christian school, church, home teaching. But the scripture doesn't say anything about the time between training up a child and when he's old, time frame. It does not mean that you won't have challenges in that in-between time. But God is faithful to bring them through and return back. We had to go through some really tough times, and some particularly dark times, with one of our children. For a period of time, I didn't know if my child was dead or alive. Believe me, that can be a very dark time. And the enemy tries to have a field day with your mind. When you're faced with tough times like this, and you're depending on the Lord for strength to get through each day, all you can do is pray. Trust in your God and hold on to the promises in his word to get you through. Today, I can stand here and say, but God. As a mom, I couldn't have made it through those times and those dark days. And my child wouldn't have made it through without continuous prayer and the power of deliverance. Don't you allow the enemy to make you believe the lies that it's somehow your fault, put you under condemnation, guilt, that you should have done things differently, etc. Those are lies from the pit of hell. You continue to take your authority in the heavenlies and declare that they belong to Jesus and continue to claim them for the kingdom. It's never too late. We serve a God who performs miracles. Looking now at our four adult children, all serving the Lord, married, some with children of their own, and blessings of the Lord being poured on and through them, I can say that God has been faithful. The words to a song that came to me as I was preparing for today, just listen, because this was my theme song. In my moments of fear, through every pain, And every tear, there's a God who's been faithful to me. When my strength was all gone, my heart had no song. Still in love, he proved faithful to me. Every word he's promised is true. What I thought was impossible, I've actually seen my God do. He's been faithful faithful to me. Looking back, his love and mercy, I see. Though in my heart, I had questions. I even failed to believe. He's been faithful. 
so faithful to me. I believe that everyone in this room and those hearing my voice need to know that we, we are here and we've all been created for such a time as this. We are going to see the power and glory of God manifested in this generation. This is a time that God is restoring the families and the units of family and bringing the prodigals home. My encouraging word to moms and grandmas today, if you're still praying for your children to return and you're holding on to his promises, don't lose hope now. You're about to round a corner and see the faithfulness of God. It's going to come to pass and your prayers will be answered. Acts 16.31 on the Passion Translation says, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and all your family. If God promised it, he will come through. His promises are yes and amen. So stand strong on the word of God. Begin to imagine. What is the day going to look like? When your kids return home, then declare it each and every day until he brings it to pass. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I know you're watching. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Um, My mom's here today, too, so happy Mother's Day. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it was like a crazy, busy week. I... My son just turned one, so we had a massive birthday party yesterday, and um, I just, like, sat down last night, and I'm like, okay, Caleb, what do you want to say to everyone here today? And thinking it through, I probably changed, like, five different times what I want to talk about, you know? Um, And then this morning, I just felt like, you know, God just wanted to talk about our yes, you know? And as a mom, we have to say yes to a lot of things, you know, and, um, well, first of all, saying yes to having a kid, and everyone's telling you, don't do it, don't do it, right, um, and, um, but it's awesome, you grow up just like that, you know, just wanting to be married and have kids, and then you get there, and you're like, whoa, like, I, this change is, like, everything, right, um, and so, yeah, I just want to talk about saying, saying yes to God, and, and when we do that, we're lining ourselves up for the abundance of God. When, if we're all our business owners, you don't take a risk, you don't get the reward. Um, so when we don't t- say yes to God, we miss out on all those blessings and impact the people around us. Um, so, yeah, uh, the past four years, I kind of had the opportunity to walk with my mom through a couple of things. And, you know, I had my, my idea of what God wanted to do in her life. And in my siblings' lives, and so we said yes to God, and we kept saying yes and yes, and I watched God bless my mom abundantly. It's just one thing after another. It's like, whoa, God, I didn't, I didn't expect this, you know, I didn't expect that, and you know, and it was this rhythm, and I, I don't think that rhythm has stopped yet, you know, and I started watching that and saying, okay, God, you know, you, you have the same thing for me too, right? Um, and, you know, it was something that God was highlighting to me, and I started to believe and move forward with it. And that's true for everybody, no matter what moment you're in, or if you feel like that's being highlighted or not. God has abundance and abundance and abundance. Um, so I just wanted to say, I know as moms we say yes to a lot of stuff, but just keep saying yes. And one of the things I've said yes to is going back to work. I don't know if I can do that, you know if we have more kids or whatever, but for right now, you know, I have the opportunity to do that. And um, because I said yes, I now got these young women who get to come in my home and help me take care of my son and my niece, and I get the opportunity to bless them and to give them a vision and a hope of what God can do in their life. So that's just a simple idea of how when we say yes, God also blesses the people around us, and um, it just opens up a lot of doors. And when I used to work... Um, I first got my job in Markham. I've been doing accounting for about seven years, and I used to say yes to all the crappy files, you know, say yes, say yes, you know, and it's a lot of work, right? You're learning all these new things. You're dealing with stuff you don't want to deal with, but it broadens your understanding. It opens up your scope, and 
um, now, like, you get stuff thrown at me. I'm like, okay, this too shall pass. I will get through this. I can do this, right? And this helps me as a mom just be like, this too shall pass. And, you, and there's lots of joy, and you have to choose to enjoy all the moments in life. But saying yes is just, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And, yeah, so I encourage you to just keep saying yes no matter what season you're in. Some of you have got kids who are married, and you have grandkids now, and I'm just one year in. But every season of life, God's got more. He's got a lot. And um, I, I want to, you know, meet Jesus one day and not have missed out on some amazing opportunity that he had lined up. So, yeah, I just bless you all with that, and happy Mother's Day. Isn't that amazing? Wouldn't you like a mother to pray for you? Can you feel the fire in when your child is off the way that mothers step in to pray and they learn how to pray because they will defend their young? This is Anne. What I have to say is a little different. (laughs) <laughs> different in the way that I just want to say God has been so good in my life. You have no idea. My mother abandoned me when I was 14. My dad had already left, and my mother needed him. And I, when I think back on it, I was so confused, so upset, and didn't know why she was leaving me behind. She was taking my two younger sisters and leaving my two brothers and I to fend for ourselves. My brothers both were older, and they just kind of disappeared out of my life because they had girlfriends and whatnot. And uh, (laughs) when I think back on it now, I think that must have been somebody else. Because God has brought me so far from that. Yeah. (laughs) I'm not even looking at my notes. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, long story short, I had a lot of confusion, a lot of shame, because I thought it was my fault she didn't take me, and a lot of bitterness and anger. I was so angry with the whole world. Anyway, I met Martin. Uh, (laughs) We were like totally opposite. (laughs) He came from a Christian home. I didn't even know there was such a thing as a Christian. I didn't know who God was. I didn't know he could heal me. He could save me. He could bring me out of all that garbage. Yeah, I had no idea. Anyway, we got married. I was uh, 18. He he was 20. And by the time I was 20, two weeks after I turned 20, we had our first child. So I've been a mother for 63 years. But I didn't know how to be a mother. (laughs) Had no clue. Because my mother had left, left me in confusion. So I didn't know how to be a mother, but I soon had to learn. He didn't come with any instructions. <laughs> so three days from being a year, we had another boy. I might as well have had twins and got it over with. <laughs> uh, but God began to speak to me, actually, when our first baby was being born. I went into shock. And as they were putting me out, all I heard was the name God, 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 God. And it never dawned on me till many years later that God was calling me right there. That I had a call. He was calling my name. (laughs) Yeah. It's beautiful when I think back on it now. Didn't seem so beautiful back then. I thought, like, who's God? Why is he? interested in me. I lived in shame. I lived in confusion. I lived in all this 
anger and bitterness, but he was there all the time. I was 23, and I was going to take my life. Life didn't, had nothing for me. To, it seemed like there was nothing good happening for me. I didn't know how to be a mother. I didn't know how to be a wife. I didn't know how to be a friend. And I took a chair, and I knelt down in this little cabin we lived in, and I said, God, if you're real, I need to know right now. And he just flooded that room. Oh, he just, like, it was just like the sun was coming into the room. When I think back on it, the journey was a long journey afterwards. I don't even, well, I'm still in the journey. (laughs) I'm still getting healed from all the wounds. But I came to the point in my life where I said to myself, I need to forgive my mother. That was one of the hardest forgiveness things I ever did in my life. I didn't want to forgive her. I blamed her for all the bad things in my life. And it was, uh, I finally forgave her because she asked me for forgiveness. And I, I couldn't say to her at that time, Mom, I forgive you. I never did say that to her. But when she passed away, and I was coming back from Vancouver all by myself on the plane, I looked out the window, and I said, Jesus, would you tell Mom that I truly forgive her? And I remember I was sitting on the plane by myself crying, trying not to let anybody see me. (laughs) And there was such a release, I knew he had forgiven me. I want to tell you this. My parents did come to the Lord. I'm so thankful that my mom and dad did get back together. And they gave their hearts to the Lord. And I think they were in their 50s when they gave their hearts to the Lord. And so many times, my husband allowed me to go and spend time with them. I had a hard time going and spend time with them because I hadn't forgiven. And so many times, I think to myself, I would go for a walk, and I'd tell myself, okay, this is the day you need to say it. You need to say, I forgive you for what you did. But I never did it, and I regret that. But God has forgiven me. Yeah. If you're out there today and you got any kind of unforgiveness in your heart towards your mother, your father, your siblings, anybody, today is the day. Make it right. There's... Unforgiveness in my heart almost destroyed my whole marriage, my life, everything. Now when I look at my children, I have, we have three children. We lost a few babies after our last little girl was born. But I look at them differently because now there was things that they did that hurt me. But now I can forgive them. I've forgiven them. We went through some really hard times in our marriage, and I have a great husband, believe me. He, he put up with a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, you have no idea. <laughs> I just bless the Lord, because he's been so good to us, so good to us. Uh, I want to share with you uh, one of the most member- memorable or meaningful, I think, Mother Day, Mother's Day gifts that I've ever given my mom. It was actually years ago when I was in university, and I actually had the opportunity to do an internship in the, the Northwest Territories. I was in Fort Good Hope, First Nation. So I was, <laughs> someone knows it. <laughs> so I was up almost at the Arctic Circle. 
So it was 24 hours sunshine. I was on the ramparts, like a cliffside overlooking the Mackenzie River. We got to take the river by boat many times. I saw giant black bears. Like it was this beautiful experience. I met amazing people in the community. And I happened to be there on Mother's Day. And so my friend and I got together and we took photos of one another holding up these messages to our moms, just saying thanks for different aspects of them. So I shared with my mom a few things and I said, you know, mom, thank you so much that you have given me this passion for nature and the outdoors. And thank you so much that you raised me to be strong and capable and it allows me to do things like this. Uh, Thank you so much that all my life growing up, you would talk about the most beautiful place in the world. And even though you had actually never been there, you would talk about Canada's north and the west coast mountain ranges of Canada. And it just gave me this longing to go. And I, I said, thank you, Mom, that you, you know, you were so touched growing up by indigenous culture and history in our land. And it just made me so curious. And so I just gave her this thank you and this acknowledgement that, you know, Mom, I've actually realized that right now I'm more living your dream than I am mine. And if you hadn't dreamt the dreams that you dreamt, I wouldn't be walking in this right now. And so the things that meant something to you and the, like, the thoughts you thought, all those things are actually having so much impact in my life. And so I realized that I was actually living in an expression of the inheritance of my mother. So I want to, <laughs> I want to, and you can think about that too, different areas of your life, good qualities that you have, different things that you've done, you know, how that's been passed on to you from your mom or what you're passing on to your kids. But I want to read a scripture to you, and it comes from Galatians chapter 4, verse 22 to 26 in the Passion Translation. Um, I want to get to the end of it, but I'll read a bit more for context. It says, Have you forgotten that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave girl and the other by the free woman? Ishmael, the son of the slave girl, was born of the natural realm. But Isaac, the son of the free woman, was born supernaturally by the Spirit, a child of the promise of God. And these two women and their sons express an allegory and become symbols of the two covenants. The first covenant was born on Mount Sinai, birthing children into slavery, children born to Hagar. For she represents the law given at Mount Sinai in Arabia and the earthly Jerusalem of today who is currently in bondage. But I want you to hear this. In contrast, there is a heavenly Jerusalem, an invisible Jerusalem, as Wendy would have said, an unseen realm above us, and she is our true mother. (laughs) Can I say that one more time? In contrast, there is a heavenly Jerusalem above us, and she is our true mother. She is the free woman birthing children into freedom, for it is written, burst forth with gladness. Rejoice, O barren woman, with no children. Break through with the shouts of joy and jubilee, for you are about to give birth. The one who was once considered desolate and barren now has more children than the one with a husband. Dear friends, just like Isaac, we are now the children who inherit kingdom promises. (laughs) I got a little bit more for you. (laughs) So the unseen realm, the, the heavenly Jerusalem is the womb that carried you and birthed you in the spirit. And you stepped into an inheritance from your true mother. And so I want to ask you this morning, what dream of hers passed into you? Did she give you a passion, a courage, and a hunger, an unquenchable faith, a longing to live in her freedom? Did she speak to you about the most beautiful place in the world, a place you can't even see with your natural eyes, a new horizon, a city, a new Jerusalem. And so I want to bless you and just pray for you today that you would come to that realization that I did in the natural, that you would find yourself in a moment 
in a season, in a whole lifestyle, in a state of being where you would realize that you are living out the inheritance of your mother unconsciously, just like I didn't in- intentionally plan a trip to fulfill my mom's dream. I just naturally walked out the dream she dreamt, the things she spoke over me. So I bless you today to live out the inheritance of the heavenly Jerusalem. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I guess, does that mean I'm going first? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right, well, it's an honor to be asked to do this. I'm just going to be real with you and say, um, when Jolene and you were talking about let your yes be yes, in all honesty, I'm like, no, but my heart said yes, yes. (laughs) Anyway, I'm here. So I'm going to start with my favorite scripture, okay? Isaiah 60, arise and shine for your light is come and with the glory of the Lord it rises upon you. See darkness covered the earth and thick darkness over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you afar. Your sons come from afar. That's the prodigals coming home. Amen. The prodigals coming home. And your daughters are carried on the hip. And you will look and be radiant. Amen. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. And the wealth the seas will be brought to you and the riches of the nations will come. Amen. Seek first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all, all, all these things will be added. Amen. So, (laughs) I just wanted to say happy Mother's Day to all the natural and spiritual mothers And mothers-to-be, your children will rise up and call you blessed. Amen. There is absolutely no better calling than to minister to those that are directly in your home. Those that are right in front of you. Amen. To raise up mighty lovers of God. What will your children remember about you? Leave a legacy of love. Amen. Leave a legacy of love. Isaiah 66, 13 says, As a mother comforts her child, so God comforts you. And that was actually a verse that just came to me right now. I was um, doing Sunday school as a teenager, and someone gave me that verse as I was holding a baby in my arms. Amen. So leave a legacy of love. Amen. Heidi Baker, she stops and she loves the one right in front of her. Amen. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say speak blessings and life over your children. When our daughters were young, uh, we used to play decrees when they slept. Amen. Because there is power in the living word. Amen. Decrees like, I am blessed and highly favored. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the top and not the bottom. Amen. Decree a thing, and it shall be established. Our ceiling should be there for us. But really, there's no ceiling in the glory. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. So I just want to say, God is faithful through all generations. His promises are yes and amen, and his word never, ever, ever returns void. So words for the women of life, church. Your DNA is life. Speak life over your family. Speak life over your children. Speak life wherever you go. Amen? 
Yeah, John 10, 10, though the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but God, but God, he comes to bring life and life in abundance till it overflows. So um, I love this song that we did, you know, um, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. That just reminded me of when we sang that song. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. And Psalm 156 says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So I'm asking you right now, do you have breath? Take a deep breath. You are created to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Hallelujah. You have the freedom to worship him in spirit and in truth. And leave that legacy for your children as well. Amen. So it's time to live again. It's time to believe again. It's time to dance again. It's time to sing again. It's time to dream again. And it's time to hope again. You are called forth for such a time as this. And you have a voice that's meant to be heard. So rise up. Rise up and take your place. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hey! Hey! And that's it for me. (laughs) I don't think I'm going to (laughs) stand. I was asked if I would say something. I had 10,000 thoughts go through my mind. I'm like, where do we even begin? There's so much we don't realize what we carry. Um, But as I started um, putting thoughts together, this is what came out, and I'm just going to read it to you. Good morning, moms, grandmas, great grandmas. What a beautiful legacy we have here this morning. Generations are blended together. This is the day we celebrate you. Receive us. You are worthy to be honored. But I especially want to acknowledge and encourage the married moms who are spiritually single. The ones who are standing in the gap for their spouse, their children, and their grandchildren. And I want you to know you have been handpicked by the Father and entrusted with a great mission. He would not have called you if he didn't think you could complete it. You hold the keys to your family's restoration. You hold the keys. Yes, you're standing in the gap, and this requires tenacity and pit bull faith. Hang on like a pit bull. Don't let go. When you pray, grace comes at just the right time with divine insight, divine revelation, and divine wisdom. It's available in abundance. Draw on it. It never ceases. It's there. Hold on, precious one. It's not over yet. Do not look at what is around you. The prodigals may be way off in the distance. Focus on the one who created your spouse and your children. He's got them on his radar. He's, he's, they're in his eyesight. He sees them. And there is a day coming when his love will encapsulate them. He is drawing them into his kingdom. You don't know what's happening in the spirit realm. You have no idea. Do not become weary or faint-hearted in your well-doing. Victory is at hand. Be encouraged today. There are two verses that I have stood on for over 42 years, and I'm still standing on them. And Deb, you read one of them. Acts 16, 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You shall be saved and your household. Amen. 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 The other is Hebrews 13, verse 5 in the Amplified. This one I remember when my younger son was going through one of his 12 surgeries. And um, I had post-it notes up on the mirror. And this one got me through and still does. I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down, or relax my hold on you, assuredly not. 
be encouraged. He's got you. And this verse is for all the mums, the grandmas, and the great grandmas. <laughs> Psalm 90, verse 17 in the Amplified, and it says, And let the beauty and delightfulness and favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Confirm and establish the work of our hands. Yes, the work of our hands, confirm and establish it. There is a blessing upon the work of your hands. The word bless means to invoke divine care. And the word invoke means to draw on it. Draw on it. Today I speak blessing upon you. Mums, married and spiritually single mums, grandmas and great grandmas, be encouraged. Remember this, mums. You do more than raise children. You shape generations. Who? Oh, you're shaping a generation. Years to come. Years to come. There's seed you're planting. You may not see it to fruition in your lifetime, but I guarantee when it's planted, it's, it's going to bear fruit. It's going to come down the line, the generational line. Amen. And lastly, I just wanted to say, if no one has said to you today, you are loved, let me be the first one. You are loved. We serve a powerful God. Oh, my gosh. I heard the words in worship. I heard the words through the ladies, key words. And I heard, where's Leah? Where did she? Oh, she's gone at the back. Okay, we're going to do, ladies, a prophetic act. When I asked the Lord for a scripture or a word, I waited, and he came, and he gave me one verse, a very powerful, profound verse. That in this verse, you could take each and every word, and you could unpack the layers of revelation. It's so powerful. So, women of God of all ages, I want you to engage with me. We are going to do a prophetic act together on this verse. I love prophetic acts because it breaks into the spirit realm. And so, we're doing Isaiah 60 verse 1 only, that God already had Leah orchestrate, set up for us. But now we're moving into it. Engage your spirit as we engage the Holy Spirit and we move into this verse. Women of God of all ages, I'm speaking to all of us. So are you ready, ladies? Arise! 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 For the spiritual darkness is gone. You have walked into a new life. Arise. Arise. Arise from spiritual depression into your new life. For shine, your light has come. The light of Jesus Christ lives in you. The radiant, white, bright, illuminating light is alive in you. Jesus Christ's light is in you. The light shone in the darkness, and the darkness could not overwhelm it. That light John speaks about dispelled the darkness. It was there in Genesis, in creation. The Holy Spirit hovered. He was over the waters. It was dark. And when the Word, Jesus Christ, came, He spoke and said, Light be. And it was. That same light is in you. I picture right now in my mind, and I want you to picture a lighthouse. It has a big round beacon on top of it. It is a huge round light. This light shines out in that darkness. It permeates. It separates. It pulls into that darkness, and it breaks that darkness up. That light is in you. That light is dispelling the darkness in you. That light is alive in you. More alive than that light in a lighthouse. If you got near that lighthouse, that lighthouse has a sound. And it is reverberating. It is resounding. It is breaking. You can hear the electricity. You can hear the vibrations. 
The power of Jesus Christ, his light in you is more powerful than that light. It is in you, all electricity. It is flowing out of you. The same light of Jesus Christ is like a lightning bolt out of you. It's dispelling your darkness. It's dispelling all the, the fear, the anxiety, the, the, the healings you need. It's flowing within you. So arise from spiritual darkness into your new life. Let your light shine radiantly, brightly. Let your light shine. And then the last, Lord, I ask that you come. I ask that you come. You are faithful to your word. You're true to your word. We're calling down your word. Let your glory come and rise upon each and every woman here, young to old. Bring your glory down into their lives. Permeate them with the light of Jesus Christ and come in your glory. Come in your glory. Come in your glory. You are glory carriers. Women of God, you are glory carriers. Women of God, you are glory carriers. Let your light shine into the darkness. You are radiant. You are women of value. You are women of worth. You are the radiant bride. You are, we are his beloved. And I bless you this day. I love you. And may his glory shine radiant out of you. In Jesus' name. Wasn't that awesome? Isn't it great to hear from the women? <laughs> We're going to say goodbye to our online family. And Lord, thank you for your presence in this place. 